I gotta start with just the intro alone. The name of this tune is Mississippi Goddamn, and I mean every word of it. That's a statement in itself, like, excuse my French, but I know what I'm about to say, motherfucker, and I mean it, and y'all gonna listen to it. The year was 1963, and the civil rights movement had reached a plateau. The wrath of white supremacy was rampant, and black people in cities and small towns across America, especially in the southern states, were fighting for their rights. Amongst those freedom fighters was music legend Nina Simone. At the height of her career, the singer and master pianist was confronted with a series of horrific violent events that rattled the nation. In June of 1963, 37-year-old civil rights leader Medgar Evers was assassinated in his driveway. Three months later in September, the black community took another devastating loss when four black girls were killed in the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama. This sent the civil rights movement into overdrive. Both of these terror attacks deeply pained Simone. Full of agony, She turned to her craft to spell out her rage and started to write the words to Mississippi Goddamn. It's an artist's duty to reflect the times. I think Nina said to herself, I'm going to take this pain and I'm going to make something out of this. This is Rhapsody, Grammy-nominated rapper and songwriter. Just to have a song and have Goddamn in it, we're going to start there. You got to be very, very fearless, you know, especially in the South, where Jesus and all the disciples live, (laughs) to put God damn in a song. Like, what did she just say? Like, that's what we're doing? Ain't no way. That's resistance in itself. In the song, Simone captures feelings of despair and anger about the harm done to Black people in America at the hands of racism. There are no innuendos, and she addresses the government's lies head on. It was the first of its kind in a time where honesty could have cost Simone her life. But what it almost cost her was her career, and she never fully recovered. Nina Simone was born Eunice Wayman in Tryon, North Carolina. At the age of three, Simone began playing the piano and would continue to blossom into a prodigal child musician with big aspirations of becoming America's first famous female black pianist and to play at Carnegie Hall. While Simone's talents as a pianist were extraordinary, her singing voice was captivating and unique. It was imperfect and that was the beauty in it to me. It has so much emotion in it, so much weight in it, so much depth in it, it was heavy. You know, she had the type of voice that it made your ears perk up. She recorded her debut album, Nina Simone and Her Friends, in 1957, which featured the breakout single, I Love You Porgy, and put her on the map as an international star. Moving into the 1960s, Simone gained more and more popularity, but she was starting to feel burnt out from constantly being on the road and overworked. The blossoming star began to look at what was happening in the world around her and started to instead crave more depth in her craft. America was steeped with segregation and racism. Black activists were organizing and fighting for their freedom as black people were suffering from beatings and lynchings throughout the country. The events were traumatic and difficult for Nina to capture musically. Until songs like Mississippi Goddamn just burst out of me, I had musical problems as well. How can you take the memory of a man like Medgar Evers and reduce all that he was to three and a half minutes and a simple tune? Simone pulled from the raw emotion she felt towards the injustice. She couldn't go out and fight, so as a musician, she did what she knew best and wrote. I can't stand the pressure much longer Prayer. Alabama 
mama's got me so upset California's made me lose my rest Everybody knows about Mississippi gone To be as bold as she was, especially when we're talking about race relations and when it comes to black people, you didn't have necessarily feel like you had the space to say what you wanted in the way that you wanted to say it. And you have to be fearless to say that and write and record and put out the things that she did. Shortly after she wrote the song, and while the civil rights movement heightened, between 1963 and 1964, she fulfilled her childhood dreams and finally played a series of performances at the prestigious Carnegie Hall. Instead of playing classical tunes as was expected, she boldly recorded a live version of Mississippi Goddamn in front of a majority white crowd. The name of this tune is Mississippi Goddamn. And I mean every word of it. Regardless of the risk to her career, Simone pressured her label to then release the song as a single. It was banned from Southern radio stations, and boxes of broken records were sent back to Simone's home. The controversy didn't stop her. Instead, it pushed her to become more radical and even more political in both her identity and her music. That same year, Simone attended the Selma March and performed Mississippi Goddamn in Montgomery, Alabama in front of leaders and activists like Martin Luther King Jr., Langston Hughes, James Baldwin, and Sidney Poitier. After the release of Mississippi Goddamn, Simone's work became deeply political and proudly pro-black. Simone would go on to release other famed songs in her catalog that reflected the times like Backlash Blues, Strange Fruit, Revolution, Ain't Got No, I Got Life, and to be young, gifted, and black. And while she did all this with pride, there was a profound heaviness that came along with being constantly consumed by the oppression that she faced in the world, her own life, and her career. Just a trouble. Simone took on the role of speaking to the controversies of the world she lived in, but sometimes she wished she hadn't. I think that the artists who don't get involved in preaching messages are probably happier. But you see, I have to live with Nina, and that is very difficult. It was difficult for her emotionally, but it paved the way for other artists. And that allows us today to be just as fearless in that same way, to speak up, to be a voice for the voiceless, right? You know, back then, not let alone be an artist, but you even scared to march. You scared to do whatever. So it, it's reaffirming and it allows us to say we always have to continue to speak up for each other and we can't allow fear to hold us back. Throughout resistance movements in America, many black activists and artists paid a huge price for their opposition of the government and abusive systems. And while Simone survived the era of Mississippi Goddamn, her mind and spirit never healed. So in 1974, she moved out of her family home in Westchester, New York, left it all behind and moved to Liberia, Africa to find relief and start over. Now we're going to do the song Mississippi Goddamn. Simone leaves behind a legacy of brilliance and a catalog that documents the life and musings of a black woman who was brave enough to tell her story without fear. And while the song Mississippi Goddamn was not widely accepted at the time that it was first released, Simone wrote a piece that still resonates today and continues to inspire. Somebody has to continue to reflect the times and be a voice of the people. We got to get active. That's what we say today. It's time to get active. Nina got active. <laughs>